welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new here. It is Monday, so that means it is meal prep day. I have three absolutely delicious recipes coming your way. We have kind of a sweet breakfast, a lunch, and a sweet treat for a snack or dessert. All are clean eating, all are phenomenal. So definitely stay tuned for three outstanding WW recipes. <music> this week I'm making strawberry shortcake chaffles. We're revisiting chaffles but we're making them sweet this time. I'm going to pair these with some eggs and maybe some additional fruit. I do not have any strawberry extract which this recipe called for. I couldn't find it so I omitted that but that is part of the recipe. This recipe of course will be on my website. So let me show you what you're going to need for some strawberry shortcake chaffles. First, you'll need your cute little mini dash waffle maker. I will link this down below. I bought this on Amazon. I love it. You're also going to need some eggs, baking powder, cream cheese. I'm just using this whipped cream cheese because I love it for one, and it mixes really well for chaffles, so I'm gonna do that. You'll need some fresh strawberries and some mozzarella cheese, so let's get started on breakfast. So the first thing we need to do is chop up some strawberries. I want, I don't know, two to three strawberries per chaffle. So I'm actually going to cut these fairly small because I want to mix the strawberries in with the rest of the chaffle, so the egg and the mozzarella. And that way we have little bits of strawberries throughout our chaffle. So let me get these cut up and then we're ready to mix together the actual chaffle ingredients. So let's make the first chaffle. I have my waffle iron plugged in, warming up. In my bowl, the first thing I'm going to do is crack my egg. The egg is always the base of the chaffle. A chaffle is basically egg and cheese. Mozzarella is such a mild flavor that you can really use it in any type of chaffle, whether it's sweet or savory. So it's a really good choice. So I have one egg. To that, I'm going to add 28 grams of mozzarella, which is basically a quarter of a cup. I weighed that out on my food scale. Also, I weighed out two tablespoons of that Trader Joe's whipped light cream cheese. And then we're going to add in just some of our chopped up strawberries. And then we're gonna give this a stir. So take your fork, make sure you get that cream cheese mixed in really well with the egg and the mozzarella. And then as soon as our waffle iron is warmed up, we're ready to start our chaffle. So our iron is warm. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. Spray it with some nonstick cooking spray so that your chaffle doesn't stick. This amount of mix is most likely going to make two chaffles. So I'm gonna put in about half of it. You don't wanna overfill this little thing, otherwise it just goes all over the side. So yeah, we're definitely gonna get two chaffles out of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my mixture in. Close up your little mini waffle maker, give it a little bit of a push. When the light turns off, your chaffle's done. All right, guys fail. I think that the wetness of the chunks of strawberries makes it impossible to make this into a chaffle. It will not come out of the little waffle maker because the strawberries are so wet. It's so soft. So we're going to go to plan B and we're going to make like a chaffle pancake in a pan. And I think that's going to work so much better. So let me show you what I'm going to do. Round two. So I'm gonna make the chaffle just like I made it before, but I realized we also forgot to add baking powder, which wouldn't change the fact that it wouldn't come out of the waffle maker. But I am going to pop in my mozzarella. I'm going to pop in my cream cheese. And again, I just may weighed everything out on my food scale. I'm going to put in just a tiny bit of baking powder and some fresh strawberries and our egg. We'll get this mixed together and let's make it a pancake chaffle. So I've added the chaffle mixture to a nonstick skillet that I sprayed with this ghee spray from Thrive. And we're gonna let this cook just as we would a pancake. We'll flip it, let's see if it stays together. But this may be the solution to our chaffle problem. Alrighty, so much better. So the pancake works a lot better. You do have to cook it low and slow. So turn the temperature really far down on your stovetop. 
let it really cook almost completely through before you flip it. Otherwise it just falls apart, but there you go. We made it work in pancake form. So my last one is on the oven, but let me give you the point. So I'll be having this, I'll probably pair this with another fruit, I'm guessing, and that'll be a really good well-balanced breakfast because it does have a lot of protein between the egg and the cheese. And of course the cream cheese has protein as well. So this chaffle slash pancake is four smart points on both blue and purple and six smart points on the green plan because you do have to count the egg. So I just have it here on a paper plate. I'm gonna let it cool completely, wrap it in some cellophane and throw it in the fridge. And then when I wanna eat it for breakfast, I'll just warm it up. You could even add a teaspoon of maple syrup for one point if you wanna kind of make it a little moist and add a little bit of sweetness. So I may do that as well, but there you go. The fail turned into a win. For lunch this week, I'm going to be making salmon burgers and we're going to pop those onto an Ezekiel English muffin and make basically a burger with an English muffin. So let me show you what's in our lunch. First, you're going to need some minced garlic. I have two cans of salmon, non-fat Greek yogurt. These are the English muffins that I'll be using. They're the Ezekiel from Food for Life. They are found in the freezer section, usually by the health food. So we'll be using that as the bun of our salmon burger. For seasoning, I'm using the Dax Original Red Eye. You guys love this seasoning. Now that I've transitioned to a clean approach to WW, I'm always looking for clean seasonings. You'd be surprised how what is in a lot of these seasoning packets that we tend to use, like the taco, fajita, that type of thing. So Dax is no salt, all natural ingredients, no MSG. Love them, they're full, packed full of flavor. So I like the original red, it has a little bit of a kick. So I'm going to add just a small amount to my salmon burgers, but it'll really bring out those flavors. Now, if you're interested in Dax, I do have 10% off. The code here on the screen will give you the 10% off and it's always free shipping. If they have over 20 seasonings, highly recommend. So check them out. And then of course, we'll be doing just some salt and some pepper some fresh dill, arugula, which is going to add a really good kind of spicy flavor to our burgers, a red pepper, a small onion, and a fresh lemon, and of course, an egg. So let's get started on our salmon burger. I forgot to include oat flour. You are going to need some oat flour. I pick mine up from the Thrive Market. I do have a link down below for Thrive. It gets you $20 worth of free groceries with a year membership. Free shipping on the Thrive Market over $49. They literally ship within a day. I have mine within two days. You guys know I'm obsessed with Thrive. So oat flour came directly from the Thrive Market. I went ahead and got chopped everything ready to go for these salmon burgers. So I chopped up my red pepper, that very, very small onion. The recipe actually calls for a red onion. I just didn't have one. So this is one of those really good sweet onions from Trader Joe's. Lots and lots of dill. And I went ahead and zested the lemon here and squeezed the juice out of that really big lemon. And now we're ready to actually start the salmon burgers. Oh, and I also did the salmon. So I drained the cans and kind of chopped it up here with my fork. So let's start making the sauce for our burgers. So first we're gonna go ahead and make the dill sauce for our salmon burgers. So I'm gonna put in a big scoop of my minced garlic. And then to that I'm adding one half of a cup of the Fa A 0% non-fat Greek yogurt. Like I mentioned, I don't mind using non-fat Greek in recipes and cooking and things to save on the points. But if I'm going to just eat yogurt, I always choose a full fat option. And then I have two tablespoons of the dill that I chopped up as well as two tablespoons of that fresh zested lem or juiced lemon. We're also going to do a pinch of pepper and a pinch of salt, and we're going to stir this up. And this is going to be the creamy dill sauce that's part of our burgers. Next up are the burgers. So next up, let's make the salmon burger. So I have my two cans of salmon here. To that, I'm going to add three egg whites. We're also going to add the zest of our lemon. Lemon and salmon is such a fantastic combination. Speaking of lemon, we're gonna add the remainder of the lemon juice. One third cup of oat flour. That's going to really help bind these together with the eggs. We're also gonna drop in some pepper and a little bit of salt. And then last, we're going to put in all of our good veggies here. So our dill, our onion, 
our red pepper. We're gonna add all of that to the salmon mixture and then we're gonna stir it all together. Oh wait, I forgot the Dax. Oh my goodness, I definitely wanna add that. So let's get these veggies in here and then we'll go ahead and add in the little bit of Dax seasoning. So now we're ready to form our burger. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray my pan here with quite a bit of nonstick cooking spray. I'm using, of course, the Chosen Foods avocado oil. And then I'm going to take my mixture here and I'm going to form it into five patties. My recipe here makes five salmon burgers. So I'm gonna grab quite a large ball of it and kind of flatten it out the best that I can. We want these to fit on the English muffin and they will shrink up a little bit during the cooking process. So I wanna make sure that I make them just the right size for the English muffin. And then we're going to place those here in our skillet. And we're gonna repeat that until we have five salmon burgers. So I was able to get four burgers into my pan here and I'll just cook the fifth one separately. These actually look really good. So I have them here in a skillet on medium high heat. We're going to cook these until they are cooked completely through. While our burgers are cooking, I'm going to go ahead and bag up my arugula because we are going to top our salmon burgers with just a little bit of arugula. So I'm going to put just a small handful in one of my little mini or snack size Ziploc baggies. And I'm going to do that for all five days of the salmon burger. And then that way we've got that nice little bit of arugula and we'll also wrap up the English muffin. So I went ahead and wrapped the English muffins and then I grabbed my little to-go containers with the plastic lids. I bought these at Home Goods. I'm going to go ahead and divide my little dill sauce here into four. I decided to only do four patties. I'm going to go ahead and freeze the rest of the salmon because that way I have one day a week to have a different lunch. I, otherwise I get tired of the same thing every day. So I'm going to go ahead and just divide this into four servings instead of five servings and I'll calculate my points accordingly. So I'm going to go ahead and fill these up and then as soon as these burgers are done we'll put together our meal prep. So the salmon burger are done. They actually turned out really, really good. So I put those in the large side of my meal prep container. So in the small side of my meal prep container, that's where I'm going to go ahead and pop in that little bag of arugula. And then here is about the dill dressing that I got per burger. So this is a good amount. Put that in there with the lid just right alongside the arugula. Fill those compartments and then I'll go ahead and set the English muffin separately. Just set it aside and you'll just want to pack that with you if you're taking this to work with you. Make sure you pack your English muffin as well and then the rest is here in the meal prep container. And when you go to warm up the salmon burger, just pop these two out and then you can toast up your English muffin and we have a salmon burger. So with four servings, and that's changing the serving size from five to four, it does not affect the points of the blue and purple plan. It is still two smart points just for the salmon burger and the sauce. And then my English muffins are four points. So depending on the English muffin you choose, your points will vary. So this is six smart points for me. Now on the green plan, it is six smart points just for the salmon burger and then four points for the English muffin. So this would be 10 points depending on your English muffin on the green plan. But I'm excited for this. It's a heart healthy protein. Really excited to give these salmon burgers a try. And I think the arugula spiciness and that fresh dill and creaminess of the yogurt is gonna be an excellent combo. For a snack this week, I'm going to be making coconut lime bars. I'm so excited about this clean recipe, good smart points. Uh, it's such a summer vibe, I cannot wait. Let me show you what's in our bars. First, you're going to need some rolled oats, nut butter of your choice, unsweetened coconut flakes, honey, applesauce, and a couple of fresh limes. So super easy, six ingredients, Let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and grab out a sheet pan and your two cups of oats. We're just gonna put those here on our sheet pan. And essentially we're going to roast these in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes at 350 degrees. No added oil, just literally the oats on a sheet pan. So I'm gonna toss these into the oven. All right, I just pulled the toasted oats out of the oven. Now we're gonna combine all the rest of our ingredients. So I have the juice of one of those two limes. 
I also have the zest of both limes. So you're gonna zest both, juice one. I always like to save the lime to put in my water because I really do like lime in my water. So I did that with the other lime that I didn't juice. One cup of unsweetened coconut flakes. One half of a cup of honey. So it's a lot of honey in here, but that's what's going to bind it. And that is also what's going to give our bars their sweetness because we don't have anything else in these bars that has any sweetness. So basically there's no sugar or anything like that in these bars, only the honey. So that's our sweetener. Oven's just about ready for the bars. And then I have one cup of mixed nut butter. Again, you can use whatever nut butter you want. I just have the big, huge jar from Costco. So whenever I bake, that's generally what I'll use because otherwise I'm using almost the full jar of a regular size jar of peanut butter. And I do like the mixed nut butter with the addition of the chia and things in there as well. I think it adds a little extra bit of nutrition. And then last but not least, I have one half of a cup of unsweetened applesauce. Let's stir this together. All right, so we're ready to take that mixture, put it into a non-stick sprayed baking dish, 9 by 13. We're going to go ahead and add the mixture. Now the recipe says that this mixture is a little temperamental, so it's a bit hard to spread out, but you wanna take the time to spread it out as evenly as possible in the bottom of your baking dish. Oh, I don't think it's too terrible. So that you get a nice even layer so that your bars are therefore nice and even. So I'm gonna get this spread out in the bottom of my baking dish. And then this is going to actually go in a 350 degree oven. So the same temperature as our oats. So don't be like me and turn your oven off like I did. That's why it had to kind of re preheat. So make sure you leave your oven on after you remove your oats from toasting. And we're gonna cook this at 350 degrees for 30 to 40 minutes or until our bars are done. So I am getting this into the oven and I'll be back in a flash to show you our completed coconut lime bars. Our bars are out of the oven. Don't these look absolutely delicious? I'm going to let them cool for just a few minutes and then we're gonna cut these into 24 squares using a pizza cutter and then we want to allow them to fully cool before we eat them but I'll be back to show you guys the size of the bars and we'll go over the smart points. So I've went ahead and cut our bars into 24. So you can see this is about the size of the bar, which I would say is probably like a one and a half inch by one and a half inch bar, maybe a two by two. So not a bad size at all. Let me go ahead and pull one out of here so you can see the actual bar. So here is the completed bar. These look so good. So 1 24th or one bar is five smart points on both the blue and the green plan and four smart points on the purple plan. These are outstanding, you guys. You get the zest of the lime, but they're sweet and crunchy from those toasted oats. So delicious, highly, highly recommend this recipe. So there you have it for our coconut lime oat bars. couple snack options for the week. I just got another refill of the little mini packs or six snack packs of the Simple Mills Farmhouse Cheddar. I really like these. I like that they're portion controlled. They're similar to a Cheez-It. I like to eat them by themselves. You can pair them with cottage cheese, laughing cow cheese. There are four smart points for the pack. And again, they're individually serving. They're individual servings. So overeating is doesn't happen because they're individual little bags. I buy these off of the Thrive Market. There is a link down below for Thrive, so definitely check that out. And then I always like to have a Built Bar as an option as well. I do eat these a few times a week. The coconut almond is really good. This is reminiscent of an almond joy. It is three smart points. It's delicious. And then the peanut butter Built Bar, all of the nut-based bars, with the exception of this one, the Almond Joy are four smart points because they have added nuts. But I like them because they usually have a punch of protein. This one has 20 grams, seven fiber and seven fat. So I find for me, for the extra point, I stay a lot more satiated for a lot longer. So I tend to gravitate towards the nut-based bars, but if I wanna save a point, I'll go for the OG Built Bars or the Coconut Almond. This one is truly, absolutely amazing. I'll go for these guys because you're still getting a good amount of protein, fiber, and fat. So three to four smart points for a protein bar that literally tastes like a candy bar 
is awesome. So if you're interested in the Built Bar, my code here on the screen gets you 10% off and free shipping. If you are new to Built Bar, there's a special link down in the description box just for you. If you click that link, you'll actually get $10 off your order. You do have to be a first time customer or have an email that has not been used on the Built Bar site before to take advantage of that $10. But killer deal, you guys. That makes these less than a dollar a piece. Save the code because it is reusable as well. So Built Bars, my favorite crackers. Those are my snacks for the week. Thank you for joining me on this week's meal prep. I hope you enjoyed seeing the three recipes that I shared with you. Cannot wait to have these this next week. Everything is delicious. It smells good. It looks good. I can't wait for my food for this next week. All of these recipes will be on my website. The link to my website is down below in the description box. I do share the points for all the plans. I also link where my recipe inspiration came from pictures, all the things. So definitely check out my website. Again, the link is down in the description box. Also in the description box is the link to head over and join my Facebook group. We'd love to have you be part of our community over there. It is such a wonderful, supportive place to be. So head on over and join us there. Also are the links and discount codes to all of my favorite things. Some of the things I showed you here today, some of the websites, everything that you need to know is down in that description box. If you're new, I'd like to welcome you and I'd love for you to stick around and join my community here on YouTube. To do that, all you have to do is hit that little subscribe button and turn on your bell notification, which is the bell right next to the subscribe button so you're notified whenever new videos are uploaded. Give this one a big thumbs up if you're here for the meal preps and leave your comments down below. I want to hear what you guys think of this week's meal prep. I hope you're all doing well, hanging in there, staying safe and healthy, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.